Hello, welcome to the Gym RPG Show. So yesterday, Cyberpunk 2077 posted on their Twitter page their system requirements for the game, but they didn't actually post the target frame rate, whether that was going to be 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. Now, a lot of people asked them this on their Twitter page, but they were quiet on that issue. And they actually came back and answered other questions, but not this one. So if they're not going to answer it, well, uh, that's what I'm going to do here today. Uh, we're going to look at uh, what people in the past have said, um, particularly uh, on Digital Foundry. Uh, they've made some comments about how intensive this game is. And we're also going to look at uh, recent games that have come out like Assassin's Creed Valhalla and also Watch Dogs Legions uh, and try to work out uh, what Cyberpunk 2077 uh, might actually be, uh, whether that's going to be 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. Now, if you like this video, make sure to click on the like button and also to uh, subscribe to this channel for more gaming videos like this. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the tweet from Cyberpunk 2077 and they said, you asked, we deliver, check out the updated system requirements for Cyberpunk 2077. Below you'll find recommended configurations for 1080p low, 1080p high, 1440p ultra and 4K ultra settings as well as ray tracing setups. So we'll go over the system requirements in just a second, but Paris, uh, a popular streamer, he tweeted out, I'm extremely excited to see these ray tracing specs at 1440p and 4K, but one thing to clear up, are these targeted at 60 frames per second? Inquiring minds, me, want to know. Okay, so let's go through these system requirements and for minimum, the resolution that they have is 1080p with the graphics setting at low and they're asking for a processor of i5-3570K and the graphics card of GTX 780. Not going to spend too much time on this, but really you're only playing on this if you have no other choice and you don't have a PS4 Pro or an Xbox One X, then I guess you could play on your PC and try and tweak some settings. Okay, so for the recommended preset, they've got a 1080p resolution with a graphic setting of high, and they're really after a i7-4790, which is a 4-core 8-thread CPU, and a graphics card of 1066 gigabytes. Now we're going to jump quickly to the high setting, um, so that we can compare the difference between high and recommended. And for high, they've got 1440p resolution with an ultra graphic setting, and there are have the same CPU but now the graphics card is an RTX 2060 and so you can see here the performance is spent on the resolution because the resolution is about 70% difference between the 1440p and the 1080p. So if you're catching my drift then really um, your graphics card bump is spent on that resolution and the graphics setting and not actually the frame rate. The frame rate is going to be similar on that recommended and high setting. Now if we go to Ultra, the resolution is 4K, the graphics setting is again at Ultra, and the graphics card now is an RTX 2080 Super, and the difference between the RTX 2080 Super and the RTX 2060 is about 60-70% to 70 difference. So you can see here that this uh, performance increase in the graphics card is spent on the resolution. So for all of these uh, non-ray tracing system requirements, they're probably going to be on a similar uh, frame rate. So it will be above 30 frames per second. I don't see this as being a target of 60 frames per second. And I think you'll see this clearly when we compare it to the Assassin's Creed Valhalla system requirements, that these system requirements are very similar to those. Now just quickly with these ray tracing system requirements, it's rather hard to gauge exactly whether you're going to get 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second because uh, you could turn DLSS uh, on to quality or performance and you're going to get a bit of a boost in performance. So um, again we'll c compare it to Watch Dogs Legions because that game is out with ray tracing and that should give you an idea of what to expect for these ray tracing system requirements. So I want to play for you a short video from Digital Foundry and this was about four or five months ago where they were analyzing the gameplay video from Cyberpunk. Before he meets up with Jackie, one thing I want to talk about is actually the amount of light sources that this game is using is actually very high. Um, even though you know we've moved to uh, like more advanced ways to do lighting in games in terms of like 
clustered forward rendering, deferred rendering, clustered deferred, all these names to basically put more lights on, on scene. Um, it's still not exactly cheap to have a bunch of overlapping lights in games. And so I think this, the fact that this is running at 30 FPS at 4K here is not a coincidence. Yes. Um, by the way, I don't think they didn't. I think they didn't release 60 FPS footage for a reason. Probably because a lot of these scenes are still uh, pretty GPU. I suspect that's one of the things we'll see scaled down on consoles: is the number of lights per scene. So as you can see, Digital Foundry also think this is a pretty GPU intensive game and they weren't surprised that it was recorded at 4K30 rather than 4K60, although ultimately what it's recorded at doesn't mean uh, what the performance is going to be on a particular graphics card like a RTX 2080 Ti. Now I want to take a look at the Assassin's Creed Valhalla PC specs because they actually have the performance target on these system requirements. Now I know a lot of people will say well you can't compare two different games system requirements they're not going to be the same. Um, but I think because Assassin's Creed Valhalla is a AAA game and Cyberpunk is going to be a AAA game as well, well in lieu of the fact that we don't have any other information then I think we can um, at least have a look at the system requirements to see if there are any similarities here. And I think in terms of performance, because we're asking the question whether it's going to be either 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second, and whether it's going to be one or the other, um, then we can at least know what ballpark uh, that we're talking about, whether we're in 30 or 60. So if we look at the PC specs for Valhalla, there's a GTX 960, and for Cyberpunk it's a GTX 780. Now the 780 is a little bit faster than the 960, it's about 30% faster, but really they're in the same ballpark of performance. And because the Valhalla performance is at 1080-30, and it's only 30% difference, the Cyberpunk minimum setting would probably be 1080-30 as well. I don't think the minimum would be 1080-60 for Cyberpunk. Okay, so for recommended, this is also at 1080-30, and they have a GTX 1060, and for Cyberpunk, they also list the graphics card as 1060 as well. So you would have to think that the recommended resolution and the frame rate would also be 1080-30 for Cyberpunk. Now I think this one is really interesting for the enthusiast uh, system setting. They've got 1440p at 60 frames per second. Now for Cyberpunk, for high, they've got 1440p, but they have an RTX 2060, so it's not an RTX 2080 Super. And the difference between a RTX 2060 and an RTX 2080 Super is about 60 to 70%. So we can tell him probably that this high setting in Cyberpunk is going to be 1440p, 30 frames per second. Now finally for this ultra setting, on Valhalla, uh, they have 4K 30 frames per second and they're using a RTX 2080. And on Cyberpunk, they have an RTX 2080 Super, which is about 10-15% to 15 better than that RTX 2080. So as you can see here for Valhalla, they're targeting 4K 30 frames per second. So you can expect on Cyberpunk, with that 2080 Super, which is very similar to that 2080, that you're also going to get 4K 30. Now in terms of ray tracing, we can compare it to Watch Dogs Legion because that's a game that's already out now and that's a triple A game with ray tracing. So if you see here, the ray tracing system requirements are very similar to the Cyberpunk system requirements and for ray tracing uh, 1080p, they've got an RTX 2060, for ray tracing high they've got an RTX 3070, and for ray tracing ultra 4K they've got an RTX 3080. So you can watch a user benchmark video for how Watch Dogs Legends performs with a 3080 and you can see how it performs with 4K ultra and ray tracing on. And you can see the difference between 4K Ultra with DLSS on and off. So with DLSS off, I think it was averaging 4K 30 frames per second, but with 4K with DLSS performance on, it was closer to 60 frames per second. So there's a big difference if you use the DLSS.
Okay, so to recap, I hope that answered the question for you whether the system requirements were targeting 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. And I think with all of the information that we have, my educated guess is that these system requirements or these GPUs uh, for that specific resolution is targeting 30 frames per second. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's going to be always 30. It's going to have an unlock frame rate and it's going to vary depending on the scene. So, um, but at the very least, um, you're going to be expected to achieve 30 frames per second in the most intensive scenes for these GPUs. Okay, so that about does it for this uh, video. If you like this video, make sure to click on the like button and also to subscribe to this channel for more gaming videos like this and I'll see you in the next one.